Today I want to show you what I believe is a new opening for white. But before I do that, let me show you where I got the inspiration from. So after white plays pawn to d4, there is this opening response called the Benko Gambit, which is still effective even at super GM level, where you begin with knight f6 and after something like c4, this is when you go pawn to c5 immediately, asking white to advance his d pawn. By the way, which is the top played move in both the master's database and the leech's database, you can check at your own free time. So white usually plays pawn to d5 and this is when you go pawn to b5 the Benko Gambit. So the idea is to let white take on b5 after which you sacrifice the second pawn. Not really a sacrifice but you know what I'm talking about. Kind of the wings gambit by the way. Say if white takes on a6 of course you can play pawn to g6 or pawn to d6 in this position even pawn to e6 if you want. But sooner or later, the real motive is to take on a6 either with your knight or your bishop, preferably with your light squared bishop like this. Stopping white from developing his e pawn cause you're gonna take and take away their right to castle. This is the bank of gambit you guys, fully accepted variation. From here white normally plays knight c3, after which you can simply go pawn to d6. e4 is still playable by the way, I've seen a lot of people you know accepting to play king f1 or king takes f1, but the most common move here is knight f3, after which black normally goes g6, then white plays pawn to g3, I'm following the master's database by the way, the idea is to fiancaro the last squad bishop like this and castle short, for example after bishop g7, then bishop g2, castle short, or first of all play knight bd7, so that after castle short, this is when black can finally castle short, and let's address something here. If you watched my universal opening series, you probably remember the middle game plans that I shared with you in the Benko Gambit. For example, the main secret with the Benko Gambit is how you maneuver these knights. Your queen's knight usually sits on c4, like this, to put more pressure on the b2 pawn. And then your king's knight later on joins the party by going to d7, like knight fd7 or knight g4 in some lines with an intention to sit on e5 supported by your dark squad bishop. Then in the near future your queen will go to a5 and then your f rook will sit on b8 to control the semi open file and this other semi open file. For example rook e1 then you go knight b6 or queen a5 first since you know where the pieces go. Now let's just say pawn to e4, anticipating e5, this is when you go knight g4, you want to put your knight here, and if bishop a4 is played, you realize the b2 pawn is not defended anymore, now you go rook fb8, pressurizing this pawn, and say after rook b1, here you can even win back a pawn if you want, like this, this is just one of the ways in which the bank of gambit may go, but recently I discovered that you can also play these same bank of ideas even with white pieces, starting with a move knight f3, the zucatot opening. Looking at this move, if you check the leeches database for example, you will find that pawn to d5 is the top played move, that's the beauty, after which you can simply go pawn to c4, now transposing to the ready opening. d takes c4 is never a good move I think in one of my old videos I looked at this, the move I recommended after c6 was queen a4 if I remember very well, you can also play pawn to e3, but one of the moves you are going to see is this move pawn to d4. After seeing this, this is when you can start thinking of the reverse Benko Gambit, so the secret is to start playing positional moves like pawn to g3, you fiancate on your bishop, you castle short, you play pawn to d3, and you are doing all this to wait for black to play pawn to c5. For example, here you can go pawn to d3, and the top played move in the leeches database is pawn to c5, makes sense right? Trying to gain some central space, but this is when you can go pawn to b4. By the way, this is the advanced variation of the ready opening, where you can play the reverse bank of gambit. So if black takes, you go with the same ideas, pawn to a3, this is very fine and very much playable even in classical chess. If b takes a3, you simply take back with your dark squared bishop, intending to stop black from castling short. So they play knight c6, after which you can continue playing your normal moves like pawn to g3. At this point, you might see your opponents playing pawn to e5, accepting to lose their right to castle, but hey, let's just say they go knight f6 trying to do the same, fiancatoing their bishop, so you continue with bishop g2, g6, castle short, bishop g7, 
And now behold, the same plans I showed you in the Bengal Gambit with black pieces, your Queen's Knight will sit on c5 someday, pressurizing the b7 pawn. Your King's Knight will have to relocate to d2 or to g5 and be placed on e4 someday. Same ideas. Your queen will go to a5 or sometimes you will play queen b3 depending on the position. Another way you can try to play the reverse bank of gambit is by starting with knight f3 obviously. And let's just say black delays to play according to your plan. They open with knight f6. Well, this is when you can go pawn to g3. At this point, they may even play pawn to g6. It doesn't matter. You can go pawn to c4 if you want the ready, but just play bishop g2. They'll play bishop g7, copycat variation. You castle short, they also do the same. I'm sure you've seen even top grandmasters playing like this. So white usually wants to play the bank or gambit, if you think about it. The secret is not just to play pawn to d4 very early, because you want black to occupy this square. So here you can even start with a move pawn to d3. And then you're going to see them play pawn to d5. You go knight bd2, preparing for pawn to c next, because you want to take with the knight, not the pawn. The top played move here is pawn to c5, by the way. After which, it now makes sense to go pawn to c4, because if d takes, you would take back with your knight. They don't have to do that. They normally play pawn to d4, sometimes knight c6. And Guess the move once again, ladies and gentlemen. Masters in this position play the move pawn to b4, the Benko Gambit move. Why? Because they want their opponent to take and then go pawn to a3. Same ideas with the Benko. If b takes a3, sometimes they don't even take back right away. They go knight b3, putting their queen's knight on c5 as soon as they can. But let's just say b takes a3. And then this is when they play knight c6 and then we see this move knight b3 following the same ideas of the Benko gambit where they put their knight on c5 pressurizing the b7 pawn. See how chess history may repeat itself. The king's knight once again will go to d2 or g5 and later on be placed on e4. One notable game in the database went as follows. Rook e8 was played and then white played queen c2. After pawn to e5, white played knight fd2, the top engine move. Maybe preparing to go knight e4 next so that he can do some trades and then come back. But the whole idea is to play knight c5. For example, black played queen c7 and then white played knight c5 in this position see this pressure on b7 indirectly bishop a5 was played indirectly hitting the queen and white played queen a4 look at this indirect pressure this is how masters play their chess by the way with queen a4 white is now prepared to take the free pawn on b7 followed by bishop takes c6 winning one of the rooks and b6 is not even possible in this position rook fb1 is still coming by the way in the bank of gambit the a7 pawn doesn't go anywhere the b7 pawn is usually stopped by our c pawn there are just too many pieces on the queen side that stops black's a7 pawn done these are openings that you play in tournaments if you just want to be positional or if you don't know anything about your opponent. And here is the last secret I'm giving you guys for today. This is what most top players do when they are playing against certain people for the first time. When a top player meets you for the first time, he doesn't know your strength. So he's going to play a positional opening like this, trying to understand your tactical abilities and your style of play. Once they know you, that's when they are going to go back to their e4, e5 stuff and other open games. They just don't want to risk it. Play a positional opening like the Reti opening, the Catalan or even the reverse Benko Gambit trying to understand your opponent's tactical vision. Now, time for you to go and check out my new E5 defense course, which I have also linked in the comment section down below. And I'm glad to say, so far it has received a lot of attention and people are getting it like crazy. So it's an opening response that you try against White's E4 opening. You're going to learn how to play against the Scorch, the Royal Pace, the Bishop's opening, Three Knights opening, the Four Knights game, the Vienna game, 
game, even the Italian game. So it's the complete E5 defense course that I just launched with my team. You better go and check it out. Thank you so much for watching this video. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye bye.